let's talk of recurrent implantation and whether any test can tell us what is why when we or rather which patients would have recurrent implantation failure and that means not getting pregnant in spite of multiple treatments of uh, IVF and this was a study which was done in a large fertility center in China comparing 298 women with recurrent implantation failure to 2056 women who became pregnant within one or two cycles of IVF the main goal was to find out which risk factors are most important for repeated implantation failures and after analyzing 32 different factors, including age, hormone levels, medical history, uterine conditions, what did they discover? They discovered that AMH is the strongest predictor and low AMH levels were linked to much higher risk of implantation failure. Other important risk factors such as age, chronic endometritis, that is inflammation of the womb, intrauterine adhesions, high BMI, high FSH, high testosterone, advanced stage polyps, history of recurrent pregnancy loss, history of cesarean section, and PCOS, along with rheumatoid factors, were also other causes. Having a previous pregnancy was the best indicator that your risk of getting pregnant were better. The research is important because it identifies that AMH may be one of the re- indicators of recurrent pregnancy loss, and very low AMH may be one of the causes. The challenge is that For my practice, I believe that age continues to be the most important factor. Low AMH and low follicle counts indicate you're going to get less eggs and possibly less embryos. And that's probably the most key factor. I think as time goes by, we'll get more and more research on the role of AMH looking at the risk of recurrent pregnancy loss.